you and I have tremendous opportunity. We have tremendous obligation, but with tremendous resilience, we can overcome these obstacles. The money will come. Sometimes it will go. However, you are not alone and you will not finish without finishing strong. Hello, my friend, and welcome to this Friday episode of A Call to Leadership. I'm Dr. Nate Sala, your host. I'm so glad you're here. It's just you and I each Friday in the trenches, one-to-one, focusing on one tool for your leadership toolbox. I am so thrilled that you're here with me. It's such an honor to be with you, and it's such an honor to explore this journey of leadership. Sometimes, man, it can be so frustrating, so stressful. Sometimes it can be liberating. Sometimes it can be questionable whether or not we want to sign up for the work that we're called to do. But I can assure you, friend, that it is rewarding if we just stay firm and strong with resolve, with courage, with will, with focus, with a desire to serve others in profoundly uncommon ways. That's really the pathway to greatness, in my opinion. And I am just on a mission to help others to go from one to many so that we can lead together to lead in a way that creates progress. So anyhow, I'm glad you're here. This episode is a little different. If you're new to the program, and you haven't heard any other episodes before, mostly on these Friday episodes, we cover some optimistic tool. Today, we're gonna focus on something a little different. We're gonna focus on the struggle. And if you've heard the Business Monday episodes that I co-host with a couple of guys, sometimes it's Sam and Travis, sometimes it's PJ, sometimes it's Joe. These are great individuals. We talk about all different aspects of difficulties and challenges in business. I'm going to do a little solo today, if you're okay with it, on some of the struggles I've faced. I've been asked to talk about this. Some people on the uh, chat have said, Nate, talk more about your own challenges and your own struggles as an entrepreneur, as a leader over the past three decades. And I'm going to unroll a little bit of that with you today, particularly in an area that people think, you know, a guy like me would have it all together in an area of finances, money, right? You see me today, many years later, you say, well, Nate, it seems like you got it all figured out, but that's not always the way it's been. In fact, friend, I have had all kinds of trouble with money. I've had problems where I haven't been able to be wise with my spending, with my investments. I've just squandered money. I don't know if that's ever happened to you, but it's not a cool place to be when you're on your last dime. And and sometimes it's not even your dime. Sometimes it's somebody else's dime. And you just don't know what tomorrow will bring. You don't know what today will bring, where ends will meet. And you just wonder, wow, how am I going to get through this? Well, if that's you, if you've ever been in that place and you're in what we call good company, because it's happened to me. In fact, I'll tell you a couple of stories around dire straits and finances. One, when I was a youthful new entrepreneur, I had just high hopes for the possibilities, but I had terrible money management and I didn't know how to balance a checkbook, how to create a forecast. I didn't know much more than what was in my bank account that day. In fact, many entrepreneurs live that way. They basically say, hey, if there's enough money in the bank today, I'm good. But that's really no way to live because what happens when things don't go right? What happens when things 
fall apart. I mean, gosh, that could happen any, and I mean any day. In fact, that happened to me when I had been in business for three years. So I wanted to get in business for the same reason many people do, to get rich. So I dropped out of college when I was 21 years old and I bought a business. Actually, I didn't start my first legit business, I should call it, but I bought one. I was working for my cousin and he had a currency exchange. He did money orders, check cashing, lottery, sold jewelry, did taxes, all of those things in a tougher part of town in St. Louis. And I thought, I'm going to just go out and open my own because I worked for him for a couple of years. And he said, Nate, you've been running my business. Go ahead and buy it. I didn't have any money, but I had my mom and my other cousin who let me borrow money. They let me borrow $20,000. And then I needed another $20,000 to what we call capitalize it. So I needed 40 grand total. So that $40,000 then became my working capital and my purchase money for the business. So I was off to the races. I thought, man, you are just going to be awesome. You're going to destroy it. I hired my best buddy to come work for me. Not always the best idea, but he was actually pretty amazing. And then... Uh, I started doing what I thought was best. I ran the business. I had cash flow coming in. Problem was, I had no idea how to manage it. I was 21 years old. Not that you can't be 21 years old and figure it out, but I had never been taught. So I was, I was financially illiterate. And that's a very dangerous place to be when you're starting a business. So one of the biggest problems I had was I thought I could just use the company's money to fund my own life. And so what happened? I started using the company's money and I started running out of money for the company to pay its bills because I was living off of it. Instead of living off of the profit, I was living off of the money that the company was supposed to be using for its day-to-day -day operations. So then I had to start getting into credit cards and the credit cards began to accumulate. Of course, at the time, I had all kinds of cards. I had all kinds of clothing cards and I had Discover card and all kinds of other cards. And I started using those to fund the business. Well, by the time I was 24 years old, so just three fresh years in business, I had racked up over $100,000 in credit card debt. And couple that with the $40,000 I borrowed, and I think I even borrowed another $10,000. So I was in the hole, $150,000. Wow. So I wanted to be a millionaire. I wanted to be rich. Actually, my goal was by the time I was 30. Well, guess what, friend? I was going the wrong direction. So now I needed $1.15 million just to get to the same place that I needed to get to by the time I was 30. I was going in the totally wrong direction. I had to put the brakes on it. I had bought cars, I had a Corvette, I had a motorcycle, I had a BMW. I was, I thought I wanted to be the man when I was out with the friends buying all the drinks. Problem was, uh, none of that was all, it was all smoke and mirrors because it might've looked like I was doing well. The fact of the matter is that I was doing terrible. I was just struggling financially and uh, it, it was hurting my health. I had, uh, I was developing an ulcer from the stress. I was depressed. I was crying at home like, oh my goodness, how am I going to get out of this? You say, Nate, what a wimp. Hey, that's reality. You know, reality is an old saying, reality hits you hard, bro. And uh, it was hitting me hard. So I had to find a way out. And fortunately, I started to use my head to think, what could I do to get out of this hole? One, the first step, I had to stop the bleeding on the credit cards. Because if you've ever had credit cards, you know that the interest rates on cards, they can be anywhere from 0% on a balance transfer all the way to 27%, perhaps even more. So I was paying that 23 to 27% on my credit cards annually. What that means is if I had a $10,000 balance, just say 25% for round numbers, then I was paying $2,500 in interest. Well, at the rate I was going, I was never going to be able to pay that off. I was going to be 
filing bankruptcy. And so I thought, what could I do? Well, I found a company that offered credit consolidation and they negotiated with all of my creditors. So I wrapped it all up in a consolidated loan and all my credit cards got frozen. So I had no access to my credit cards. Some of them were 0% all the way to 6%. So I began paying it off. And at the time I had managed to get a, an amount of payment of $1,265 a month for 55 months to pay off all the remaining credit cards I had because I'd been paying a little bit of it. So it was a house payment. And I did not, friend, I didn't miss one payment every single month for the next five and a half years. And it was a learning process for me. It was so difficult, but I managed to save money. I stopped spending all that cash. I started budgeting. I was eating at Aldi's, getting my 25 cent loaf of bread and my bologna, my ramen noodles. I did whatever it took to save that money month in, month out, month in, month out. I closed a location that wasn't doing very well. I started listening to mentors and having them to teach me about how to manage my finances effectively, how to budget, how to save, how to be a good steward of what I was entrusted with. And it began to turn around. Eventually, I became what? Cash flow positive. I paid off that debt 100%. Amazing turnaround. And I thought, this is it. I'm good now. So then, fast forward, 2010. So that was 1995, 1996, 1997, 1998. So 1998 is when I got on the payment program. Five and a half years. So 2000 and roughly 2000, at the end of 2002, 2003, seven years later, I was like, okay, now I'm financially secure. All my credit cards were paid off. By the way, my credit rating was in the tank when I first got into that jam, because when your credit cards were maxed out, even though I was paying them on time, your credit score can decrease. So now my credit score was back up over 700, close to 800, and I was rocking. So then I have dot two. I have a new situation. I thought, oh, Nate, you'll never get back into that situation. Right, friend? Never say never. Because the second time came up and it was the summer of 2010. And we had launched a brand new program, my cousin and I, which was all cellular phone related and technology related. And we thought this is going to be it. Oh, we were doing so well at first. We had launched in St. Louis. We then went to other cities. We were in five cities and we were looking at making about $30,000 a month this is 2010 per city. So you're talking $150,000 per month from the endeavors. And this was net profit. Only one problem. The problem was is that the product we were selling had spotty coverage. It was an internet product, wireless internet. It was called uh, WiMAX and it was 4G. It was a revolutionary type of internet. And we were a master agent for a company called Clearwire. And the problem was that uh, I got my November commission check. And guess what? That, that year, uh, my funds were negative. They had given me a negative $15,000 commission check. Now, you don't have to be an accountant. You don't have to be math savvy to figure out that negative $15,000 will not pay anyone. It won't pay the rent won't pay the commissions, won't pay anyone. And so we were in a huge jam because not only that, but we also lost our, we call it a spiff for rent. We were supposed to have four months of rent paid by the carrier that was gone. We lost the marketing budget of a million dollars per, uh, per city for launch. We lost our commission structure that offered very high commission. So it was a, it was a four part just disaster. So then what happened? Back to the credit cards, started leveraging all those. I was totally maxed out again. And talk about stress and prayer. Boy, what a mess. How could I get myself into this mess? That's what I was thinking. Then I realized that I was only making decisions based on the information I had at the time was one. But the other part was is that I had leveraged everything. I went all in. Now, this time was a little different, friend. Because this time, I wasn't solo. It wasn't just Nate. It was Nate, his wife, 
his kid, his house, his life. It was going to be a tough season for us, a really difficult season, because there was not an easy way out. Now, we were helped by our team, by Clearwire, and if you've listened to the show, you might have heard little bits and pieces, especially when we did our Business Monday episodes with Sam and Travis, because they were my partners in this in this uh, crazy endeavor. So I had to figure out, how am I going to get out of debt? Well, a couple things had to happen. One, I had to go back to saving that money to where I was scrounging for pennies, cutting all possible costs. In fact, we had to sell our home and move into a, a small villa. And we had a beautiful house, big house, over 5,000 square feet, an in-ground pool. It was just gorgeous. And uh, we had to get rid of it. I had told my wife, listen, we're on the verge of bankruptcy. We're going to have to make some drastic changes. And as we're moving out and, and God bless her, everything was out of the house. She's just weeping at the kitchen table saying, I'm not ready to go. And uh, she wasn't, I wasn't either, but that's the life sometimes when you are taking risks and leading and you don't know where tomorrow will bring, could I have made better choices? Absolutely. But I didn't. And, uh, and we were going to struggle for a while. But we were going to struggle together and we were going to get through it together. So I downsized. I cut all my costs. I asked my creditors if I could pay less. And uh, I began to work it out. Slowly, we did it. In fact, the clear wire worked out where we were able to recoup most of the money that we had invested. Had to make some other drastic changes. I mean, there were some serious issues where we couldn't pay rents, we had to break leases. We just didn't have the money anymore. Uh, if we were going to get sued, we were going to get sued. We were able to make payments. At least we were able to pay everyone their their wage, which was important. And uh, and then it was a period of rebuilding. That was 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, slowly rebuilding. Now, look forward a decade later. Boy, it is like ancient history now. And... Times have changed so drastically. And I just tell you these stories to tell you about the real struggles that we face. And uh, I'm not immune to them. You're not immune to them. It could happen to any one of us at any time. In fact, I was talking with one of my students. It's probably been about six months from now who showed me uh, a bank balance of just dollars one day. And the next day, a big deposit from a business endeavor and so going from completely almost destitute broke to having the coffers filled with cash, it can be just like that for anyone in business. The point is this, you and I have tremendous opportunity, we have tremendous obligation, but with tremendous resilience, we can overcome these obstacles. Yes, we may have to downsize. Yes, we may have to make sacrifices. Yes, we may have to work with very little resources and means. But the good news is that we're still alive. And while we have breath to breathe, it is not over. Have confidence, have determination, have direction, be decisive, bind with others who will help you along your journey and overcome. The money will come, sometimes it will go. However, you are not alone and you will not finish without finishing strong. I am so thankful, so thankful to be able to share these stories with you because there is, quote unquote, a happy ending, if you will. If we just continue to press on and move forward, get financially free through education, through literacy, through making wise choices, bring the right people around you. It took me some time to figure that out. It took me some time to figure out how to make wiser choices with my finances, not take so much risk, take some risk, but not more than I could bear. And today I'm happy to report that uh, all is well. And so I hope the same for you each and every day. And a couple last points in practice. One, 
get financially literate, whether it's through podcast, whether it's through individuals who are experts in different areas and finances, whether it's books you read, whether it's videos that you, that you watch, just with the videos, I'm going to recommend be very uh, cognizant that you may have sources that are unreliable or unsubstantiated. So approach with caution, go to experts who have been there, who have credentials, who have had success stories. And also when you do even vet them because all information that you receive can have errors in it, no matter who is sharing it with you. So always work on going to the source and then be deliberate about implementing wise financial strategies. And if you're in a bind right now, it's not over. There's always hope. There's always a way. Well, that's it for this episode, my friend. I'm Dr. Nate Sala. This is a call to leadership. Well, my friend, we did it. I'm so honored you were able to join me on this episode of A Call to Leadership. Now, this might not be for everyone because you really have to be in a certain place in order to take the kind of steps to level up your leadership. And I want you to be taking steps. If you feel like you're ready for something like this, you can go to our website, greatsummit.com. I'll make sure that's in the show notes. You and I will get to spend some time together and really focus on aiming for greatness.